Hello, hello, this is Jilly Bling, and I have another project using inked and tiled. This is also using um, countryside corners for this beautiful frame. And the leaves are from inked and tiled. So this is a gotta have it, where if you order this through me, um, I would love to send you the five card kits that I have been making in this series. And this is number four. One more to go, and um, on my YouTube channel, or if you subscribe to my blog, you can see all the different designs. Isn't that pretty? Very classic. So this I saw on Pinterest, um, and it was something similar. Um, she used this um, specialty paper and countryside frames in the embossing folder. And I did it a little bit different on the inside. And it was by Fairless Stampin' Flare. And I love this. I love how classic it is. And of course, I added a little bling with Wink of Stella and a few butterflies. So these are the two stamp sets. And, of course, the little butterflies. We'll use those in a minute. Countryside dies. And then also natural prints for the word label. Okay, you ready to get started? So because we're going to be using um, embossing powder, heat embossing, it's good to have an embossing buddy. And this is for stamping. Let's just, should we start with this one? Let's just start with this one. It's right here on top. So I'm going to stamp the leaves in crumb cake. I'm trying to keep this card a bit um, monochromatic, and I kept on wanting to stamp... Um, green leaves. Oh, this would be really pretty for um, fall too if you used a dauber on them. But um, for this card, keeping it monochromatic. Hmm. Hmm. Safe paper. And when you're stamping yours, keep in mind if the stem goes off the end, that's fine because that stem is going to be tucked underneath the word label. And we'll be doing stuff on the inside. Just a little bit of stamping. Oh, you should see my first attempts at making the inside. Um, you know how people talk about an epic fail? Yeah, I, I was doing just a little bit too much in there. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Kind of embarrassing, but sometimes it's good to see when other people fail so you know what not to do, as in don't put too much on there. So, um... I'm going to hand cut out the leaves, and this die is going to go right in here. And this die is for the words. And all of it will come together in just a minute. So let me cut this out. So here are these two pieces. And the leaves cut out. Okay, let's see what's next. Next is sparkly paper. And I'm going to cut that with the countryside corners. Okay, let's start building this card so all these pieces start making sense. And I'll put all the paper cut sizes on my blog. And my blog is jillybling.com. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button in YouTube and or my new blog and it, I think it says newsletter and if you click on newsletter it will have you put your email address in and that email address doesn't it just goes I just can see it but it isn't sold or anything like that okay see the card happening almost maybe close embossing folder let's emboss one of these vanilla pieces it takes three vanilla pieces for this project. Oh, and you know what? This time I want to try to do a portrait. So I'm going to change this around. And if you have an embossing folder that's directional, like if it's just a random pattern, it doesn't matter where you put it in here. But if there's a pattern on it, I like to use this little black line to line up my paper. Then I know it's going to emboss the paper straight rather than crooked. If it's crooked, your whole card will look crooked. Okay, so let's do it this way. 
like that. And these pieces will go here. This is on the inside. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's stamp that big countryside corner stamp. So that is going to be stamped in, I'm talking about this one right here. You're like, wait a minute, that's one big stamp. You're going to stamp it. I'm going to use all kinds of little pieces of it. I'll show you. Um, Versamark ink, because it's going to go into gold embossing powder. And see how big this um, block is? It's great. That's what's needed for this big stamp. But my hands holding it, it doesn't work so good for me. Therefore, it just gets to lay right here. Now, ink it this way. Make sure to get everything covered. And then I'm going to put the paper on top. And with this one, because we're going to cut out the outside of it, if you get a crooked on the paper, it doesn't matter. But if you can, try not to slide it. So once it sets onto the Versamark ink, just let it stay. Even if you're like, like this one, I could see the rubber is right here. But that's okay. There's plenty of room over there. This time it doesn't matter. You know, it might be really close over here, but I think it's going to be just fine. So now with my fingers, I'm going to try to make sure that Versamark on the stamp gets on all the bits and pieces of my paper. And when I did the sample, because I was pushing, um, like see the edge of the stamp, I know I have Versamark where I don't need it. I'm probably going to do it again, so I'll show you here in just a minute. It doesn't matter because we're going to cut it off. Okay, so now lift it straight up. Okay, Versamark is clear ink, so I can't see a thing. And my powder and my powder is a bit messy I probably should dump it out and start again but you know sometimes sometimes I'm just too frugal too frugal for my own good I don't want to throw it out so until there comes a project that I need my versa my um, embossing powder to be perfect I'm probably going to just keep using this if I see like a, a big paper piece in there I'll pull it out, but so far, they just don't stick. Okay. I should have used my embossing buddy. Did I get it all? Looks good. Okay, so there it is. And you're like, yeah, I see some similarities. But we're going to cut out after the three dash border. We're going to cut out this one, which is what goes to the inside. So it's going to take one, two, three dies. Here it is. Yay! 
I use washi tape for holding things in place. I should use my mint tape. Marjo Wag sent me some mint tape, and I love that stuff. Mint tape, I think, is intended for exactly how I'm using washi tape. I have so much washi tape, though. It's crazy. Okay, so here's all the pieces. This one is garbage. Okay, so let's see what we have. Where's where's our sample? Okay, so this one was landscape. This one is going to go portrait. And these can go... Should I put this one? Kind of pretty. And it's going to go here. This will go to the inside. It's going to go across there. And these are inside pieces. Okay, let's start building this. So, if I were to put everything on dimensionals, I would have a pyramid. Therefore, I'm going to use a lot of liquid glue, especially with that sparkly specialty paper and embossing folders. Because there's texture on embossing folders, if I use my stamp and seal, it probably would work. But I've had it a few times that it came up off of my card. Just because with embossing folders, there's less surface to attach to. Okay, so that looks good. Now, I turn this frame over and put glue, maybe a little bit heavy, just because there's so much texture to the specialty paper. So this is a little bit thicker than I normally would use glue. And then this just gets put anywhere on the inside of this frame. And you could probably tell, have lots of vanilla paper there, not so much here, but it doesn't matter as long as the hole is covered. Okay, just let that think, let the glue soak into the specialty paper. And what kind of words should we put on here? I, I like that just a note. Let's stick with that. And let that start to stick. Just a note. So that will be done in, oh, here's my embossing buddy. The embossing buddy is most important on the inside because we're going to stamp first with crumb cake ink and then emboss. They are like, I can't see it. It's going to go in the powder. Okay. It's nice when my heat tool is all warmed up. Okay, so this, it feels like it's attached. So I'm going to put glue all over the back of this and put it right in the middle. So I'll get that centered. Oh, we had to put the linen thread on. And the butterflies on. I like butterflies. In the garden we have flowers and we've been having um, a lot of hummingbirds and I just, I love it. Kathy and David, I talked about them moving <clears throat> into their new house and 
because the weather is so nice, they're starting to think about um, yards. And first they had to get their driveway in. They had a sinkhole. How does that happen? Um, so the driveway, just gravel, was put in. And then they started getting a sinkhole. And I guess the driveway gravel wasn't compacted. So they had to dig everything out and put in um, different types of gravel to get it all secure. Are you like thinking I'm crazy by putting that much on? It's because we're going to put the linen thread on here. But you know what? Before, that could sit for a minute. Um, anyhow, so Kathy and David are now thinking about yardening and plants and Kathy is very particular that she wants plants that call butterflies and hummingbirds. And I appreciate that. That's nice. Okay. And I know that the label with the greeting is going to go right over the top. Oh, I was supposed to put this on here. Not too late. Whew. Oh, look, they stayed together. <laughs> I planned that. Okay, extra glue. See, putting this on now won't miss a beat. Okay, now this one could go on as planned. And it's all already together. Actually, that might be a good way to do it. So my crumb cake ink pad was running out of ink, as you could tell from the back side of the leaves. I re-inked it. It's all good now. Okay, and linen thread. Linen thread. I use so much linen thread. I love linen thread. I have two pins in this one. This one must be special. I think the yellow one stands out more. So, white one could go away. Okay, so linen thread, to do this little swoosh, I'll show you how to do it. With your hand, hold it right there in the middle, go around, and it depends on how big, if you want just a little bit, keep your fingers together, or you could stretch your pinky way out and it's a bit bigger. Okay. So here's my circle, and I'm holding the two ends together. So on here, I would say, but I don't want to do it. I'll show you. I'll show you what my hesitation here is in just a minute. Okay. So see how I took the two ends, making it into a figure eight, and this is kind of just a temporary hold, and smush it down onto there. That's all it's to it. The reason I was hesitating is because I don't want the linen thread to go over the leaves. I want the linen thread to come in these vacant areas. Well, <laughs> that's why I was hesitating. Um, but you know what? I'm just going to go with it. I kind of, I kind of like it going over them. That leaves this a little bit more calm. It's a crazy card. Lots of texture and sparkle on it. Um, but before I stick this down, I'm just going to check how the linen thread is laying because, like I said, this is a temporary hold. I could pull up like one strand and position it right where I want it. The way that these two are laying and see how they're in different areas, I like that. This one here, how they're all twisted, I don't like that. So, I'm going to find, this one here is fine. This one, this one that's twisted, I don't like that. So I'm going to take it, just put a little bit over there. And now I'm good with this because they're different lengths. They're not right on top of each other, so they don't look as one. And then this is going to be nice. Therefore, I'm ready to put this on now. Right in the middle. See, that's kind of pretty this way. Okay, so what do you think? The linen thread in opposite of the leaves, that area, or the linen thread right over the top of the leaves? Kind of gets lost on top of the leaves, but I think it still looks good. And if you want to adjust it more, you can kind of pull it, because you know it's being held on just by 
the dimensional. Okay, that's good. And now, are you like, wait a minute, those leaves are a little bit different. I put Wink of Stella on them. Can you see the sparkle on the leaves? And when you use Wink of Stella, there's liquid in here with sparkles in it, which is what's right here. Can you see that? It's just very faint, very fine shimmer of sparkle. But the liquid in here, if you keep on, I, a whoops turned into, and ooh, I like that. Um, the whoops is from the liquid, it kind of reactivates the ink and it makes the leaf look a little bit muddy. For instance, no Stella with Stella. It kind of fills in some of these um, these details of the stamp, which is what I was trying to avoid. This one, it's almost looking yellow because the crumb cake ink was picked up by the Stella. But then you can also use this to your benefit where if you want the leaf to be stronger in color, you can apply ink using Stella, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I hope it turns out good. I didn't really practice this. Maybe I'll, I'll practice it on here. So you could take Stella, like an aqua painter, go right into the ink pad, but you'd probably leave some sparkle residue. In my crumb cake pad, I don't want to do that because rarely do I use sparkles with crumb cake. So I'm going to take a block and use the ink here because this is very easy to wash off. And I'm fine if sparkles get on there. So I'm going to pick up some color and see, kind of paint it. So maybe um, when you get your Wink of Stella, this piece right here, it has a little black ring, a necklace around it. I got Stella all over everything. Um, you have to take this off. And the black ring looks just about like that, a little bit thicker. Take the black ring off, throw it away. And what that does is it engages this tip in here to go right into that hole. When the black ring is there, the tip hovers right above it. Therefore, you don't get any Stella action. Okay, so it's ready to roll as if this was a new one. This one's a little bit loved. Um, then on the side, it says push. So I say do that. <clears throat> kind of gently, because if you push, you're forcing the liquid, the product, up through the barrel into this area, and then it's gently released into the brush tip. That's great. If you prime it and push it too much, you're going to get stuff dripping off of your brush tip. As a matter of fact, when I first started this one, I was pushing it too much and I got a big old puddle of Stella. That was like half of what's in here because there's not that much in here. So with that said, you can give it a little bit of a squeeze to get it going. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make the color lighter because that went on a little dark. Oh, that's going on dark too. Okay, I'm going to try this. Maybe I should try it on a leaf that's not seen. Well, bite the bullet. Just going to go for it. And what I'm doing is I'm making the leaves just a little bit darker so that they stand out more than the other card. And then on top of all that, they're sparkly. I could do this with an aqua painter, but it wouldn't be sparkly. A little more sparkle. So you'll have to tell me what you like better. The colored leaves or the leaves with just Stella? Let me see, I'll do this one without adding more ink. See if it will naturally pull the ink from the stamped image.
a little bit more color in. And then I'll put dimensionals um, under these leaves. Oh, I got a lot of ink on the tip there. I'm going to try to dilute it a little bit by getting more product into the brush. There it goes. Roomba's coming. I should probably turn her off. She's probably coming right over here. Hold on. Takes a minute to get lo loaded up. Oh, that looks good. I'll just leave her right there in the middle of the house. Okay, so that leaf is a little dark. Okay. Then... I would say I'm going to clear the brush tip out, but I'm going to use it on the inside, so I'll just leave it, and I'll use this on the inside in a minute. Okay, so some dimensionals. Well, which, which do you like better? Which leaves? They're just different. So some dimensionals underneath the leaf ends. Oops. I love this card. It's not hard at all. It's a little fussy, but it's kind of pretty. What's going on here? And if ever your linen thread stops behaving, you can always put it where you want it to be. And just a touch of glue because the glue will soak into the linen thread and kind of hold it right where you want it to. Right there. That's how I want it to be. But I might need to put something on it. Well, that one, it's, it's staying. Okay, I'll just let it soak into the thread, soak into the paper. I'll work on these leaves. Okay, so if you were working on the inside, and I know you've already seen the other inside, but maybe you don't remember it, what would you do? What would you put in there? Nothing? Just a greeting? Because it already says just a note. I guess you could say, because the words on this um, stamp set are really nice. Um, I think I'm going to need some minis over there. I kind of don't want to disturb these because they have glue on them. Mini. Good, good, good. Nothing. I'm going to put the butterflies on. Good, good, good. Nothing, nothing. That glue is already holding, though. That's nice. Okay, so you're ready to see my inside epic fail. Let's do butterflies first. Butterflies. Two butterflies. Brushed, brass, butterflies. Um, a big one and a little one. And then on the inside, just a little one. So when you're picking them up, try to get the glue dot under there. Cute. Then a little one. Just a note. Okay. So you ready for the epic fail? Let me first set this up. Okay. Are you going to stamp on there? Yeah. You need something. So I'll show you the worst, <laughs> but keep in mind, I was going somewhere with this. 
because if you put this over the top, that calms it down a bit. Then if you put this in here, it calms it down a bit. But in the end, no, too many leaves. Okay, less leaves. Well, that's okay, but that's better. See, that to me, I like that because it has heat embossed stamped over the top of it. Just a few leaves that are stamped off. Mm -hmm. One butterfly. You could write whatever you want. That's all you have to write right there. Using the frame that was in the garbage can for a minute. Okay, here we go. This one's a fail. But you learn from mistakes, right? What you learn is don't go crazy. So here and here, image, crumb cake, stamp off. Didn't get stamped off very well, but that's okay. So this is just a, just a, like a hint of a background, just a little bit. Look a little naked here. Now that looks a little muddy. Do over. There it is. Okay, so the reason the embossing buddy is really needed is this part, but it can be, you know, let me try not. Um, so embossing buddy, if I'm not going to, if you were to put this all over the top, any moisture remaining in the classic ink, the crumb cake ink, it would hold on to embossing powder. And the first project, I didn't want that. I want the embossing powder just to go to the Versamark. But if by accident you don't use your embossing buddy, on this project, if my little leaves held on to some embossing powder, they would look gilded. And it would be with this, it would be perfect for this kind of excessive. <laughs> um, this project because it's it's monochromatic it's got a lot of sparkle going on so I'm putting just a note kind of random places and I'm doing my best to keep it parallel with the edge of the paper and on the sample if I were to show you the sample now you'd say yeah you got a little crooked there okay so let's see what happens when I put the embossing powder on here Is it going to stick to the crumb cake ink? And did you know that you can um, heat emboss, do this right here with any ink if you're quick enough. If you're really fast and the ink is still wet, the embossing powder will hang on. Okay, so when I look at this, there's maybe a little bit of powder on my leaves. So there's, there's just a little bit of powder. Not 
not much. Oh, this one. There is. Okay. So, that's good. And I have ink at the bottom, so it's going to flip over. I think that's it for stamping. You can stamp on that little center piece and then just right underneath it. Whatever you like is good. Bo was just having a dog dream. Okay, and I purposely use liquid glue because when you um, heat a paper, it kind of gets a little bit warped. Like this one is. And I noticed some of my words are kind of going downhill a little. But I'm hoping when I put that frame on here, they'll um, not be so obvious. So if I put a bit of glue on here, hopefully it will help straighten out that crumb cake heat embossed paper. Okay, stay straight. Stay straight. Okay, there it is. Okay, straight, dry, flat. I should put like a book on it or something, or that big stamp. Okay, now the frame is gonna go on with dimensionals on the inside, and this little label is gonna be flat. Oh, and now we could put Stella on the leaves. There's Stella on these leaves. I guess I know how to turn a simple card into that. I ain't all that simple anymore. So dimensionals, and I'll probably need to cut some of them in half just because this little frame is kind of narrow. It's like this side is fine. This side over here, I didn't get it very straight. But because it's vanilla paper with stamping on it, going on to vanilla, It'll hardly be noticeable that I didn't cut the frame straight. Okay, I'm gonna need some some halvesies. Half minis. We should have some mini mini, super mini, super mini dimensionals. Okay, I have one more. Instead of putting it back, it's going right there. Okay, so this goes right in the middle. Mm, I have a little smudge there. That's going to go down into the collage look. Okay, and the label. Oh, I wonder if I could do my little fancy thing. So here's the die. The die has a lip on it on the inside edge. Maybe. How can it be so hard? Okay. And bone folder with the tip. My other bone folder doesn't have a good tip. Not like this one. Okay, so the two cards, the sample versus this one, there's a few differences. Uh, 
um, the Stella, one we kind of painted color on it. The layout, the layout is different. Mm, the linen thread is different. This one has an embossed embossed. A little bit of an edge. I did it a little crooked, but that's okay. Oh, that looks good. Okay. And the little butterfly. Oh, we had to do the, the um, Stella. Just a little bit in here. On the leaves. Just a little bit. Oh, too dark. Well, probably should have did this step before I put that frame on there. I love Wink of Stella. Doesn't take much. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna take this, run it under the sink, rinse that off. And my Wink of Stella, give it a bit of a squeeze. I'm gonna make sure that I get sparkle without crumb cake ink on it. And that's looking good. It's looking pretty. Okay, and one more butterfly and then that's it. A little one. There, there, and now you can write Happy birthday. Have a wonderful year. Okay, that is it for today's project. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe and like button, and I hope you have a great day.